Today we're going to explore if it's possible to play guitar really fast using really thin guitar picks. Here's some context. A couple of months ago I posted a video breakdown of Paul Gilbert's guitar technique and one of my points of criticism, if you can even call it that, was Paul's use of really thin guitar picks. I said that this is not something you want to copy from Paul's playing and that anybody who's serious about playing rock and heavy metal and shred and fast guitar styles should be using picks that are thicker than one millimeter. And one of my viewers called me out on this. He said that he was not convinced by the points I made and that if thin guitar picks were good enough for Paul Gilbert, then pretty much everybody should be able to play guitar fast with them as well. And I have to come clean about something. In all my years of practicing and building my guitar technique and speed, I've actually not spent any serious time using ultra thin picks myself. But I figured if I'm going to take a stance on this issue, I might as well eat my own cooking and actually do an experiment and try to play guitar with ultra thin picks. Paul Gilbert style picks and let's see what happens. So for this video what I decided to do was take one for the team and actually ordered from Amazon a pack of Paul Gilbert signature guitar picks. Haven't even opened them yet and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down what I think about these picks here live on video and we'll see what happens. So let's see Ibanez Paul Gilbert Paul Gilbert's signature pick features Ibanez's original short teardrop shape, which offers both the versatility of a regular sized teardrop and the fine pick control of a jazz type pick. It supports a wide range of playing styles from pop rock chord strumming to blazing solos. Well, today, I get to be the judge of that. So I got the pick in my hand, feels really, really ridiculously thin. I'm afraid that if I hit the string hard enough, I'm gonna break it. Okay, so the moment of truth comes, I'm gonna play a pentatonic scale using the 0.6 millimeter Paul Gilbert pick and let's see what happens. Any mistakes are of course the pick's fault. <laughs> I can definitely hear that scratchy sound on the wound strings from the pick that Paul Gilbert talks about. And that kind of cello-y, brushy kind of sound. And that's what I like. I like that kind of cello-y, swish, swish, swish kind of sound. And of course, the main thing that's happening here is exactly what I thought would happen when I start playing with these thin picks. Every time I play a note, because I hit the strings really hard and because I dip the pick pretty far in between the strings, every time I begin to apply pressure to the string, the pick flexes. I'm gonna show you a more extreme version of this. Like this, it flexes every time I play a note. And even just a micro flex like that is enough to throw my synchronization off. At slow tempos, you can't really tell. So when I play that pentatonic scale, you couldn't really see or hear anything because the tempo was slow enough for the hands to get back in sync in time for the next note. But I predict the moment I try to play anything even remotely fast or challenging, my hands are gonna have a hard time staying in sync. So you're gonna have a fun time watching me screw up in front of you and embarrass myself on video in just a moment. All right, so the big question is, can I play fast with this thing? I'm just gonna play a few licks that are kind of fast and let's just see how it holds up and how I feel about the pick. As I predicted, the speed is pretty much there, but the hands aren't totally in sync. What I'm finding is I have to pick a lot lighter than I normally would with a lot less pick attack to minimize that flexion issue that I brought up earlier and that helps me keep my hands a little bit better in sync. And so if I were to practice with this pick for maybe a couple of weeks and gotten used to picking lighter all the time, I would probably get around this issue and I would be able to play with my normal level of two-hand synchronization. But this is still not what I'd recommend for most people for reasons I'll talk about a little bit later on in this video. For now, let's try a couple more licks. So one thing I also don't like is every time I bend the string, I tend to push against the lower in pitch string on purpose to pull it out of the way with the pick to leave my fingers room for a lot of heavy vibrato. So I'll talk about that technique in a separate video. But my point is with these 
thin picks. I fear I'm going to be breaking them all the time if I played with them for any extended period of time. I already, I'm already feeling a roughness around the edges that I don't normally feel after just a few minutes of playing. So that's to be expected, of course. <laughs> So single string licks feel a little bit better. I think it's because I can lock my wrist and forearm in one position and because I don't have to change strings, it's a little bit easier to maintain my two-hand synchronization. Keep in mind though, that in addition to this pick flexing and it's just not being ideal for faster playing, as I pointed out, I'm also not used to playing with these smaller picks in general. As you saw, the pick that I use is quite a bit bigger, not just in terms of thickness, but in terms of its overall size as well. So it's gonna be harder to play with any new pick, even if it was 1.4 millimeter that I normally use. Let's try a few arpeggios real quick. So arpeggios aren't feeling great at all, but this has little to do with the thickness of the pick and more to do with the fact that the pick is just too small for my liking. So when I play, what ends up happening is I'm muting the strings I'm trying to play because there's very little of the pick sticking out compared to my normal pick when I have quite a bit of it sticking out to get maximum pick attack. So I don't like these picks for sweet picking at all. <laughs> One thing I'm also noticing is how quickly this pick is getting worn down around the edges. When I'm feeling it with my finger, it already feels pretty rough. Like it feels like I've been playing with this for like six months and it's only been just a few minutes here for this video. So I fear that if I play with this for even a week, it's not gonna last. It's gonna break at some point when I bend the string or something, especially if I use this to practice a lot of rhythm guitar riffs with a lot of aggressive down picking. So on the whole, I don't think these picks are gonna become my go-to guitar picks anytime soon, nor would I recommend them to anybody. However, let me answer the big question. Can you play fast with thin picks? The answer is, well, yeah, of course. Not only can Paul Gilbert play fast and clean with these picks, so obviously some people can do it, but even myself, I could play pretty close to my normal speed with these unfamiliar picks, even though my hands weren't totally in sync as you saw and heard. If for some reason you're looking to switch to thin picks in your playing, which I still don't recommend, here are the adjustments I would recommend you make. First, if you're used to playing with thick picks like I am, then you would have to dramatically reduce the amount of pressure you use to hold the pick in place. Now, I normally don't use all of that much pressure to hold the pick in place, but for this one, it's like I'm holding a mosquito or something in my fingers. I feel like if I'm pressing even a little bit too hard, I might break. So you're gonna have to back off on the pressure even more than you thought you would. Now, for me, I don't like it because I like a lot of power behind my pick attack, but hey, if you wanna play with these thin picks, this is what you have to do. The next adjustment you're gonna have to make is to pull the string a little bit outside of the space between strings and use more of just the tip of the pick to graze the strings instead of using more of the pick to hit the note. And I personally don't like it because, again, I like maximum power with minimum effort from my pick attack, so I like having the pick deeper inside of the space between strings. But if I do that with this ultra-thin pick, it flexes more. If I hold the pick closer to the tip, and pick this way with just the very tip of it grazing the strings, then I don't have that flexion problem so much that I pointed out earlier, so I can get around the issue and still play fast and keep my hands in sync. The next adjustment you'll probably need to make if you're looking to switch to these thin picks is you'll need to use more hammer-ons and pull-offs in your licks in addition to pick notes. And this actually works great for Paul Gilbert because as you probably know, a lot of his licks use a mixture of pick notes and hammer-ons and pull-offs, kind of like this. <laughs> like that. So this is something you may need to look into if you're looking to play with these thin picks. Another tactical tip for getting used to these thinner picks, if you want to play fast with them, is to use lighter string gauge because that not only will help you to avoid the flexion problem we talked about, but also is going to keep the picks healthy for longer. And the main reason I'm not going to go through the trouble of getting used to these picks is because they require a lot more control to get used to without any additional payoff, at least for someone like me. Because even the difference in tone that I heard and felt on the wound strings is not audible at all when you play with as much distortion as I do. And also, just because someone defies the norms of traditional playing and is able to play fast by using an unconventional type of pick or by using an unconventional type of motion does not mean that everybody else should be able to do the same, and it doesn't mean that everybody even needs to go through the trouble of being able to do that. Just like this guy who can lick his forehead really easily doesn't prove at all that everybody else should be able to lick their forehead with an 
enough effort or that anybody should even try. But as far as the picks go, I remain unconvinced. I think that you will be better off building your speed with a pick that's at least one millimeter or thicker. You'll have an easier time keeping your hands in sync. You'll have better articulation and better speed as a result of it. If you want to know more about building guitar speed with less practice time, hit the link below. I'm going to show you a one hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. And there I walk you through step by step exactly how to build your speed without doing any slow practice using a process I designed that you probably never heard other guitar teachers talk about. I'm going to show you how it works. It's pretty simple. And if you do it for 10, 15, 20 minutes per day for the next week or so, you'll be very surprised by how easy playing fast will start to feel. If you want to know what it is, hit the link below, enter your email address, I'll send it right over to you. It's free. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. See you next time.